Rock's Classic Rock, Q1043. All right, thanks, Jim. Uh, we're talking today with Jets linebacker Jamie and Sherwood. Good morning, Jamie, and how are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing well, doing well. So fourth year with the Jets. You yes, sir. Safety in college to linebacker. You went yes, from sir. backup to starter. And all you're doing is leading the team in tackles and since week five, second in the league. And how does all that sound? Sounds good, but uh, I feel like there's definitely way more on the table. Um, second in the league is not good enough. Um, so, you know, obviously still try striving to be the best that I can every game, each opportunity, uh, every day at practice, trying my best to be the best player that I can be, not only for myself, for my teammates, coaches, and family. So the sky's the limit. Well, not really, you know, there's feet <laughs> on the moon, uh, footsteps on the moon, but, you know, I'm saying I'm always striving to be better, though. I love that. So CJ Mosley has obviously been struggling with the injuries, first the the toe and then the neck, and uh, but it's got to be a big help having a guy like that around. Uh, most definitely. Uh, like you said, I made the transition from safety to linebacker. So, uh, you know, sadly, with everything that CJ has been doing, you know, all I want to do is just be able to play next to him. You know, to me, he's a Hall of Famer. When I was in college, I used to play with him on Madden. So when I got the opportunity <laughs> to be his teammate, you know, that was just so surreal to me. But, um, yeah, he's still around. He's still in all the meetings. He comes to the games, you know. Uh, he texts us, like, with uh, ideas and how he can help and, like, what we should be able to be looking at, you know, in terms of us playing faster. So, you know, uh, with every opportunity that I get to go out there and play, you know, I do it the best that I can, like I said, for my teammates, but really for him because um, I would have never got this far without him. Um, and I'm not saying by getting the chance to play, it's just a simple fact of everything he's been able to teach me, show me, you know, through his play. So, you know, I appreciate him every step of the way, you know, without him, I wouldn't be able to have any type of success. Now, wait a minute. I got to, I got to back up for a second. You played CJ Mosley in Madden. I played an Alabama Madden. guy when you were at Auburn. No, is it? <laughs> is that allowed? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, he was the best linebacker in the game, so it didn't matter. But uh, he was on the Ravens at the time, so you know, they had the best teams basically. You know, Lamar Jackson had just got there, uh, Madden nineteen. So you know, I used to use him. And I'm telling you, he's unstoppable in that game. He's unstoppable. Good tip. Good tip. Uh, yes, can, can either one of you explain Vanderbilt? <laughs> it's. No. I, I looked it up because I, I had no idea. The last time that that Vanderbilt beat Auburn and Alabama in the same season, do you know what year it was? I, I saw it. You know, I just kept scrolling. Nineteen fifty-five. Well, I mean, only thing I can say, you know, is just credit credit to Vanderbilt. You know, uh, the past couple of years, uh, you know, they've been getting it on track. The quarterback they had, he actually beat Auburn last year at a different school. So, you know, again, just credit to the guys that they got there. They're obviously working hard to change the program. Uh, Auburn just went out of goalposts. Say that again. They're going to run out of goalposts. They're going to throw them all in the river. Nah, I, I hope not, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> all, right, I mean, all right, we'll change. We'll get off of that. I know that's it's it's a sore it's a sore point for a lot of teams in the SEC this year, and at Diego Pavia, he's something else. But I, I want to know, what, what is it like being the, the, the green dot guy on defense? You got that voice in your helmet, right? Um, they make the call, and then what do they say after the call? What are you hearing in there? Uh, so they give the call and that's it. Uh, you know, they no have more 15, talk. Yeah. They have like a 15 second window to, to give me the call. So, um, in those 15 seconds, he's saying whatever he needs to say, mainly in the call. And then after that, you know, I just take over on the field, relay the call to, uh, my defense, you know, try to give them any, um, formation recognition or any type of key that I have from um, studying that, that previous week, and, you know, just going to play ball. My main thing is just being a leader out there. So, you asked about the green dot, you know, who's ever had that green dot, you know, you're basically the quarterback of the defense. Like I said, you get the call, you get everybody's cleat set, you get everybody ready to go that play. Without that person with that green dot, you know, the defense can't run. And to wear that green dot, your coaches and your teammates have to have a ton of respect for you. And that's why I respect the CJ so much, because once I got it, I understood what all he had to deal with. And the main thing is you never want somebody to say they didn't get the call, they didn't hear the call, because again, that – that relies on you at the end of the day. So when I have that helmet on, I, I do my best to be a leader, um, you know, lead my soldiers, the warriors, and go out there and, like, win the downs, get off the field, three and outs. Mm. Have, you ever, have you ever thought about uh, giving you guys a mic so you can talk back? <laughs> I always up, coach, that. get out of my head. <laughs> it would be cool to have it because uh sometimes like you know with with how much noise out there you know he might say like right and it might sound like tight or something like that so I'm over there trying to signal to him like say it again say it again 
So the mic would help, but you know, that's, that's the best thing about being in league. Nice. Well, you finally got a big win last week. Now you head to the desert for a matchup with another division leader, the surprising Arizona Cardinals. They're five and four and they've had one of the toughest schedules in the league through week nine. I, I, I looked at it. They, the four losses they have are against the three division leaders and a six and three chargers team. So how do you attack this team? How do you stop Kyler Murray and his crew? How do you stop the, you know, Garrett Wilson's buddy there, uh, Marvin Harrison. Uh, what are we looking at this week? Uh, so the way that like, we're going to play against them, you know, compete at the the fullest extent, you know, uh, the games that we've had and the games that we've lost to, it's all about game of inches. You know, it's just small things, whether we lost by three, six points. So, you know, it's all about correcting everything that we've done wrong up until this point. And I'll say, like, as a defense, we, we haven't played up to our standard. So, like you said, they're uh, – they're good in their division. They're a good team in the league. So it's about matching their intensity and bringing a little bit more. Um, you know, they got great players, but we got great players too. So it's about everybody being at their best when it's required, everybody being their best every play. And again, with that green dot, I'm going to be able to help everybody be their best, get everybody to call quick, get everybody lined up quick. And again, just communicating everything that I know, everybody else communicating what they know. And, you know, a noisy defense is a great defense. You know, who cares what the offense knows or, or hears that we say, like, regardless if they know or not, you know, at the end of the day, you got to line up and you got to execute. So again, the main thing for us is just communication, make sure everybody's on the same page so we can fix everything that we haven't done the greatest in these past weeks. Have you played in that stadium before? In Arizona? No, sir. This has been my first time in Arizona. I, I remember seeing a, a special on the building of that stadium and especially the field because they roll the whole field outside to get oh. sun and water on the because it's grass, even though it's indoors. Yeah. And they roll oh. the whole thing outside, but you don't think about how heavy an entire field is. There's like seven railroad tracks that had to be welded in place so they can do that thing it's it's a marvel of engineering but uh, that is crazy it's that, that's a lot of work could uh, be crazy I feel, I feel um bad. all right so monday uh we're gonna have tickets for q and a 4.3 listeners all day it's veterans day um and then they're gonna go to the salute to service game uh against the cults next sunday uh any veterans in your life that you want to give a shout out to as we uh, head to that day uh you got uh, some folks my high school coach, he, he's a veteran. Um, he's actually going to be at the game next Sunday as well. Uh, first of all. So, you know, uh, I give a shout out to Coach Caffey. Um, appreciate you for everything you've done for me. I uh, appreciate you for being my head coach in high school. Love you. Well, thanks for your service, Coach Caffey. We like that. That's excellent. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jamie and Sherwood, good luck in uh, in Arizona. Have a great trip to the desert, and we'll catch you next week back home for a salute to service. Yes, thanks sir. For your time I appreciate you. New York's Classic Rock. Q1043.